One star. Horrible writing for a horrible character. Super unlikable and unrelatable character. She seems to blame a lot of things on her mom. One no star. Reason. It's like the I main character was deliberately written as time likable. Story is basically glorified by star. Unlikable, unlikable selfish, selfish, and rude. This I understand this book is like not for me, but my daughter was interested, so I read it. This the main character is so unlikable. The main story would not be a difficult thing. Awful and people are trying to support this you. Probably so Clearly the author of his name is not as one to insert herself into the story. Yep, this is happening. Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rem, and I'm reviewing a book. This book is a comic book called I Am Not Starfire. Warning, this review will be more of a rant because there is just so much wrong with this story and the main character genuinely pisses me off. The basic rundown of I Am Not Starfire is that our main character, Mandy, is a super edgy girl who was the love child of Starfire and some unnamed sperm donor who even though he is never named, the public consensus is that it's the Penguin. But in the story, we do get it implied that Nightwing is the father, which would make Darkstar Mandy's true identity. So basically Mandy is this edgy teen girl who is victimized because we live in a society that wants her to, be, to try harder to be the best her that she can be and everyone loves her because they appreciate her mother's greatness because she saves the universe on a daily basis and her mother loves her because of course she is her mother anyway we meet lincoln her asian best friend who is also an anarchist please stop glorifying anarchy in fiction we learn she likes this bitch named Claire who is popular and perfect and has popular friends that make fun of Mandy because they are one note characters with no personality and in high school stories there always have to be bullies even if they are bullying a motherfucker whose family friends are literally superheroes. A lot of whining about being a teenage girl happens and attempting to compare being in high school to being a superhero and how they are the same. They're not. Then, at some point, Blackfire shows up out of nowhere, and the story ends with Starfire losing a fight against Blackfire and Mandy getting superpowers and one shotting Blackfire, even though her mother couldn't beat her and Mandy has never trained or whatever, whatever. Then everyone claps, literally, and she becomes a superhero, starts dressing slutty, and they live happily ever after with Mandy having not gone through a single natural transition into her character arc of being a superhero. Although she does get talked by Raven and I would love to see where that went. So it would be insanely easy for me to just poke fun at this comic. I could say that the art style is trash, which it is. There's like this one panel that shows the entire titans team and it's insanely disgusting to look at like they had nightwing look like he just walked out of a gay bar or some shit his ass was overly defined and cyborg looked like they didn't even try <laughs> i couldn't mention how the main character mandy is well that but honestly, I feel like the main issue for this story is the central message of the book and how it is delivered through the main character. Now, this is just an idea off the top of my head as I have literally read it once about one hour ago before making this video. But for whoever read it or just read the synopsis of it can tell you, Mandy is a fucking demon child. Like, she is the poster beast of entitlement wrapped up in the cloak of a husky preteen. Like in the beginning, there is this scene that's supposed to establish that dynamic in the relationship between Starfire and Mandy. Basically, it boils down to Starfire loves her daughter and her daughter hates her for it. Like Mandy mentions that Starfire doesn't mention her appearance anymore, which implies she used to dislike her appearance at some point in time, but then decided to let her daughter express herself with all that gothic edgy looking stuff and you know that's good parenting to let her just do what she wants to do sometimes it's just clothing or whatever but on the next page mandy also says she does not 
like her appearance, implying that Starfire still does mention liking her appearance or disliking her appearance. But in the book, Starfire never says it. You never see her feel that way at any point in time. Now, that led me to believe that this is not a subject of contention in their relationship anymore because Starfire does nothing but praise her daughter for being just who she is. Seems like Mandy is just digging for something to victimize herself with, even if she has no reason to. I, man, mommy hates the way I look, even if she never says it. I know she does. Me. Uh, that's, how, that's how Mandy talks in my head. The entire book is rife with these lessons of self-deprecation. It's always stating that you should never do your best because you'll ultimately fail. There is this line, you can't set up future generations for success, we'll screw you at every turn. Which, fuck you for saying that. I mean, <laughs> you're basically telling kids that they're just going to screw up the world no matter what. And there's no definitive proof of that yet. Basically, it's saying kids suck. It is indicative of a person who should not be a parent or an adult because they have no hope for the future. And I'm saying adult because adults are the ones who shape the future through teaching children how to be better than themselves back when they were children and better than the children they are now. Using their own learned life experiences and that of those around them as reference. God, I can barely talk because that line made me so pissed off. Like, if your kids are not equipped to grow up and shape their own futures in some ways, that is your fault. Now, whatever they do when they're adults, that's their fault. But you teach them, you teach them what they need to know, at least while they're children and teenagers. Then let them do what they need to do. Like, push them up the tree, like Bird does. Now, in this situation, I'm not talking to Mandy. I'm talking directly to the fucking author, I forgot her name. Fuck you for having that message in your story, man. <laughs> That's terrible. Like, it would not matter if the writer was using Mandy's pessimistic diatribes to build a character flaw that she had to overcome later on in the book, but they never show that, they never express that. And in a lot of ways, they play her edgy victim mentality as a positive trait for her. Like, she explodes on Claire at one point in time for taking a selfie with the Titans because it hurt her feelings. Now, Claire apologized and got chastised by Mandy's best friend Lincoln for this, for not liking her enough to not take a picture with celebrities. Which I think most teenagers would want to take pictures with celebrities, especially if they saved everyone's life on a regular basis but aside from that Mandy's clearly in the wrong for getting mad about something that's stupid so mad in fact that she almost ruins their budding relationship until Claire decides hey let me be a pussy and go apologize to this bitch real quick now even though she did nothing wrong she met celebrities and was excited that is all she did also why was Mandy stalking this bitch's Facebook in the first place. I forgot. That's how she met. That's how she found that out. She just happened to go on to her soon-to-be girlfriend's Facebook page and look through all her pictures and saw a selfie and fucking had a conniption over it. Man, she's a fucking female incel creep. <laughs> Manny, Manny's an r slash nice girl. That's what she is. <laughs> And her statements about being anti-college, like, I went over this already, but yes, college in America is expensive and not everyone needs to go to college if their preferred career field does not require a degree or a certification. That being said, Mandy's whole outlook on this subject can be boiled down to, Eh, yeah, look at me, I'm so edgy, I hate college. And that's why you're an idiot, Mandy. She has this stupid line, and I'm nitpicking on this, but even a teenager would understand that what a superhero does is put their life on the line every day, fighting gods and demons and stuff. And she says 
what her mom does is easier than having to talk to Claire for the first time. Let me say that again. Risking your life on a daily basis, even if you have superpowers, is easier than talking to some bitch that she wants to make her fucking pinky ring. That is absurdly ridiculous, and I hate this character, and I hate the writer for making this happen. Oh, and there's this one scene where in Claire's house where they are talking about Ophelia. It seems like they wanted to gender swap the characters and make Ophelia a pompous bitch who talks down to Hamlet due to... And I swear, dude, that has to actually be how Hollywood pitch meetings are actually held nowadays. And during that scene, Mandy has this line about emotional resource. And I feel like that was the writer subconsciously writing out Mandy's character profile in one sentence. Um, it says, so like they're sitting here and it's like, I mean, what is instead, what if instead of like mental illness, which is kind of a messed up way of putting it, we just do Ophelia, like write about her, like a new interpretation. And then, uh, Mandy goes, yeah, like, I feel like the play would be better if Ophelia was written by a woman, which don't even get me started on that dumb shit. Then it goes, that could be the assignment, right? If we, like, just rewrite her scenes with Hamlet. And then Claire goes, yeah, so she's all like, Hamlet, you're a whining asshole, and I'm too good for you. Damn, you go, girl. And then here's the line. The line goes, um, Mandy goes, and Hamlet's all, oh, but my life is so hard. You need to give me all your emotional resources. And... In a lot of ways, that is no, not even a lot. In every way, that is Mandy's character in a nutshell. She acts super bitchy, then cries like she's the victim of some societal oppression because her mom is perfect and tries to love her. Like the story makes it clear, she does these things for attention. She's an emotional vampire. So we also have this scene afterwards where it kind of more more reinforces that Mandy's a bitch. I mean, there most of the story reinforces that, but we get where she runs out on her SAT and she doesn't tell her mom she ran out on her SAT because she doesn't want to go to college, which she's a minor, so I'm pretty sure the school would tell her mom. But ignoring that stupidity. Throughout that scene, she goes back home after the flashback. She goes back home. I forgot to say that that was a flashback. I told you it was kind of a rant, but she goes back home to see her um, mom with some dude who I think is Dick Grayson, but he looks like a queer, so I don't know. And. Then her mom tries to talk to her because she stole their food and ran away. <laughs> and then she stonewalls her, not wanting to tell her anything. And then she kind of mocks her for not being psychic and figuring out why she's upset. And then we get to see why she's upset because she's mentally thinking it trying to show the audience that her mom can't be a psychic which also comes back into play later on actually and she's only mad because this person who I think is Dick Grayson looks like a douchebag even though he was only nice to her and because apparently her mom can't read her mind and figure out that she ran out her SAT and comfort her. I think because she's Mandy and she deserves it because she's a victim of 
the society. That's the best I can explain that. No, why is she such a bitch, bro? <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> now, during that scene where she steals their food, like a little gremlin, um, we have it mentioned that there are a number of things that they don't talk about in their household. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read off the page. It says, Starfire comes in after she steals their food, and she's like, is there something that is upsetting you? And then we go into narrator speak. And it goes, there are a number of topics we don't currently discuss in our household. Then it goes back to Mandy, and she's like, nope. Because, you know, she's a bitch. And, you know, most parents would probably just, like, snatch her up. My parents would have, but... Nah. And then we list them off. It goes, number one, my appearance, which I think I mentioned. Oh, uh, there's also another contradiction because <laughs> of what I said earlier about her saying that she can tell her mom doesn't like her appearance. But during the scene with Dick Grayson, or the guy, I think it's Dick Grayson, or an Asian guy, whoever that guy is, clearly she was praising her daughter for just being the fuck who she is. Ignoring that. So then Starfire goes with a downtrodden face, I think. That's supposed to be sadness. I can't really tell because the art style in this comic is ridiculous. It goes, so you are okay. And then it goes, number two, my biological father, who's the penguin. And then it goes, although I think I know. It's supposed to hint that it's the penguin. Then it's gonna go, <laughs> number three, my lack of powers. I mean, they literally never do bring that up in the story, except for, like, near the third act, I think. That's it. <laughs> I could be remembering it wrong, but yeah, no. They literally do, don't ever talk about that. I feel like the writer is just, like, trying to compensate for the fact that they forgot that she doesn't have any powers and should. So, about that topic, it seems like Starfire does try to talk to Mandy but Manny just stonewalls her, and that's my issue with that part of the story. And then she, like, decides to act like the victim, and the story plays her as if she's the victim that entire time, even though she has a very loving mother. <laughs> it's like, Mandy's mad at her when she stole their food and Starfire did nothing wrong. She's just mad because she's not getting the attention that she's seeking from society. <laughs> It's the best way I can put it. <laughs> I mean, in the writer's defense, maybe she was going for Starfire and need to try harder to get to understand her daughter. But dude, it's not translated well in the story. Once again, especially after Mandy steals their food and then waddles away like a baby penguin and her mom doesn't even like slap her or anything for being a bitch. <laughs> Okay, and then the funny thing is I do feel like this story seems to have a lot of potential and that is something that really gets to me. The story fucked it up and it not it's not like this premise hasn't been done before. I'm pretty sure it has. I haven't really watched it. But I think like Freaky Friday had a pretty much the same exact premise. Sort of. Like, it seems like Mandy just wants to be like her mom, but just can't admit it to herself, which would be great nuanced writing overall. Like, like, like with this whole Claire thing, Claire is basically a mirror of Starfire in a teenage body. She's portrayed as beautiful, popular, and perfect at everything as stated in the story. She's in l love with someone who is like her mom and that is really subtle writing to hint at an Oedipus complex to be or maybe actually Mandy wants to be like her mom and those feelings are manifesting in a crush for a girl who is similar to her mother or has similar traits to her mother or that could just be me overthinking the comic a little bit too much 
But like, imagine like if this was some deeply psychological story about a frumpy teenage girl who has always looked up to her mother due to how perfect she is, and due to her unknown father's DNA, she was always ridiculed or ignored by everyone around her because she didn't get the genes that her mother got. She got the genes that her father had, which made her look like she does in the comic. <laughs> And the only person who showed any affection to her was her mother. This results in like this deep admiration for her mother, but due to the trauma of like being beaten and bullied all her life by those around her, the affection and admiration gets turned into something that's a bit more like taboo. And that's what she's wrestling with for the entirety of the story. You cannot tell me. I don't read DC that much. But you cannot tell me DC has not done, done something like that before. <laughs> now, I also want to touch on the college thing again. I know I keep bringing this up, but this is the scene where Starfire brought a fun dinner for her daughter to help her get into college because she's a good mom and she wanted to talk about colleges with her with her high school daughter because that's what American families do and these good ones they parents teach their kids about the responsibility of college, college applications so if they want to go to college they can go to college and as far as Starfire knows her daughter wants to go to college because she was never told her daughter doesn't want to go to college. A fact that's also pressed upon in the story multiple times. Okay, let's get to the scene. So, Starfire, like, I don't know if it was a joke, but she got brochures for every college in America for her daughter. And then I, I am inclined to believe that because she has super speed or whatever. And I'm sorry, but they made, they made, I have to say this, they made Starfire so likable and lovable in this story that she's basically a foil to how toxic Mandy is. Like, even by teenage standards, she's a terrible person. And once again, I don't think it was on purpose. <laughs> Because in this scene, this is a scene. This, this this scene is Mandy's worst scene, even worse than when she flipped off Claire because she took pictures with the Titans. So what happens is, as Starfire and Mandy are talking about colleges, Mandy just starts yelling at her, and this devolves into this huge argument. Starfire only wanted to help Mandy get into college because, as the comic stated. Mandy never told her that she did not want to go to college. So why the fuck is Mandy exploding at her mom saying you don't understand when by the stories on that mission, Starfire is not psychic, so she can't understand things he does not know about. Why? It, it seems like the story intentionally put the Starfire's not psychic scene before this scene to make Mandy look worse. And that gives me hope that the writer was attempting to portray these as character flaws for Mandy. But it's not portrayed as a character flaw when you victimize her or try to victimize her with some invisible oppression that she has that no one has ever seen. It just makes her look worse, and then at the end of the story, you rewarded her for being a bad person. So, Mandy runs off to her room and acts like a victim again. Oh, and by the way, she also skipped her SAT test because she doesn't care about the fact that her mother had to pay to go to get her into school because she doesn't want to go to college. Now, when Safra finds out, she is understandably mad, and I think this is the scene that causes Mandy to run away, if I remember correctly. This is the moment when they show Starfire does want Mandy to go to college. Honestly, they use this scene, I guess, to make it seem like 
Starfire was like badgering her to go to college. But once again, she didn't know that Mayan didn't want to go to college until then. And of course, she's going to yell at her for skipping the SAT that she had to fucking pay for because Mandy don't got no job and she ain't got no money. Also, like, well, when, when Mandy ran away, she bought a she bought a coffee. So was that Starfire's money? Did, did she use her mom's money when she ran away? Is she is she that is she is she that evil? Does she not understand life to the point that she thinks money is no object because she was born rich? That's how she's that's how she's portrayed. But, I mean, Starfire says something that I think makes a lot of sense for humanity as a whole. You have a duty to be the best you can be. That's very inspiring and nice to say. It makes sense. Because if you're not the best that you can be, you're the worst that you can be. And then you become a murderer. Or a drug addict. Or a thief. I mean, I guess you could be the best thief you can be and, you know, become a mobster or some shit. But, technically, they're, they're still bad people. They're just good at it. Anyway, she wants her to live a successful life, and since Starfire is probably rich and best friends with Nightwing, who is basically Bruce Wayne's son, money will probably not be an issue for them. Now, I'm only saying best friend because it's not overtly said that Mandy is Dick Grayson's son or daughter. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my brain went to man when I saw one of the pictures of her in the comic. <laughs> Yeah, I'm only using best friend because they never said that Mandy is Dick Grayson's daughter. So even then, I'm pretty sure Starfire has known them for years. They probably wouldn't mind paying. And when they met the Titans in their house, it was portrayed as if they all knew each other. It also made it seem like they knew Claire too, which was weird. I think that was just a mistake in the writing and no one, no one found it in editing. Anyway, so her whole debt argument is ridiculous. Then she just says it's not that big of a deal. Starfire says it's not that big of a deal, sorry. So she doesn't even care about... She doesn't even care about her going to college. She was just mad because she skipped the SAT. Which is understandable. She should be mad at the school too, because school didn't tell her that her daughter skipped the SAT. I'm pretty sure if I skipped the SAT, my parents would know. Oh. I keep getting sidetracked, sorry. Which also makes sense because... So... <laughs> I just started talking like I never said anything. Anyway, I got I got to take things. I got to take this time. This time but, uh, I got distracted so many times, like on side rants. I'm gonna keep it. Fuck it. Anyway, her Mandy's whole argument is ridiculous because Starfire's argument makes more sense. She knows her like. She knows that she is her daughter's mom. She is Starfire. She is rich and famous and powerful. No one's gonna mess with them. And people love Mandy just for being Starfire's daughter. Like no one's actually mean to her except for two budget characters who were forced into the story. I don't even think they have names. Did they have names? They were Claire's two friends. I'll look that up later. Okay, then we get some plot development at the very end of the story. Juicy plot development. Blackfire shows up like I said before, she challenges Mandy for the throne even though she has no powers and is an earthling. And then we get a Starfire backstory. I don't really read Starfire comics, I think there are like three or two, they, didn't, they weren't that successful I don't think. But I feel like it was mostly on point, it seems like it was going based on the Teen Titans show, you know, the good one. Then... Uh... You know what happens. Mandy gets superpowers after Starfire gets her ass kicked, and that's it. Now, my issue with this is that why isn't any of this set up? Yeah, we get a moment where Mandy looks behind her while she is walking home from school, and we see some shadowy figure, but we don't know that that's a black fire. It's just a fucking shadowy figure. Then, that is not touched on ever again. Like, why do modern stories only have a plot in the third fucking act? In a story, the plot is supposed to be a slow build to the third act, where the plot finally comes to its intense climax. This story is like if you were having sex and the entire time it's all sexy talk and foreplay, and then the guy climaxes before you can even put the condom on.
Okay, so this is my problem with artificially created external plots at the end of the story. Now, if this were a kid's book, maybe it would get a pass. But bad writing is bad writing, so here we go. Mandy suddenly gets powers, which is fine, but now she can completely dominate Blackfire, who is a trained and seasoned warrior, who also mollywops Starfire, the other trained and seasoned warrior, in a fight. When Mandy has had no practice, after she just could not run more than two feet before getting winded three seconds prior. Also, there is no time for the story to develop Blackfire happening at all, so it just seems stapled onto the story. Like, yeah, comic readers understand Starfire's backstory, but for one, this one seems like it's going based off the old Teen Titans cartoon. And two, no actual fan is reading this, so it's just bad writing because they exposit the entire backstory in like one or two pages. Now, I like that they gave her a character arc. I do feel like a central theme of the story is kids understanding their parents was implied at the end. But once again, it was not set up in any way. I mean, yeah, people with common sense can realize Mandy is just an attention-seeking little shit, but dude, they needed to do this so much better. Like, they needed to do so much more work to build up to that character-wise for Mandy. I mean, she literally never attempted to even understand her mother or herself, which is indicated by her line, I'm not even afraid of failing, which is weird, at the end of the story. That basically states that she never even realized that she had a fear of failure until it went away. Now, I mean, they hinted that she had test anxiety when she ran out of her SATs. And they also hinted that that might be why she doesn't want to go to college or do the SATs because she's afraid to fail. And she didn't tell her mother because she didn't want her mom to be disappointed. They also pointed that out very clearly at the end when they decided that they wanted to have a plot. And that does allow us to infer that she was lying to herself about her edgy college is a trap, you know, ideology to cover up for the fact that she actually just was afraid to fail, which does imply a character arc. But no, because she never learned anything. She never she literally just got superpowers and then became a superhero and then she was famous and now she's happy and that just makes her the worst kind of superficial character because that means all she wanted was to be famous like her mommy fuck her honestly I prefer the Oedipus complex story <laughs> Anyway, in conclusion, I feel like this comic actually had potential. It wasn't as bad as I expected it to be, and I will, will give the writer props. She did do what she set out to do, and objectively, she wrote a comic. Whether it was good or not, she did do that. Um, honestly story didn't live up to what it could have lived up to I mean it's on the back of Starfire and they could have done something so much more intense but they just chose not to but she told her story anyway this was kind of a rant definitely a rant um, I'm not going to edit out any mistakes I made or silences not all of them at least and even some of the video I'm just going to keep it raw so you just kind of get what I was trying to say as I was saying it Anyway, if you like it, like and sub. Thank you. Have a good day. I appreciate you all. This is Rem, turning it off. Bye-bye.